Oh wow, you idiot. You bought a one of these or one of these and <laughs> I bet you're enjoying your PC doubling as your room heater. <laughs> uh, uh. That's been a running joke for over 15 years now. So we figured then, why not purpose build a system that is specifically designed from the get-go to warm your room? Could this actually be practical? And how would it compare to a purpose-built space heater? Stay tuned to find out. After I tell you about our sponsor, Noble Chairs. Their Icon Series Real Leather Edition gaming chair was designed in Germany and inspired by luxury sports car interiors. Learn more at the link below. Let's start with some college dropout level physics. According to the first law of thermodynamics, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be changed from one form into another, which means that other than the small amount of kinetic energy to turn like your fans and the light energy to run your dope ass RGB, all of the power being consumed by your gaming rig right now is being dumped into the room as waste heat, making every PC basically a sophisticated space heater. All right, so this is our space heater PC. It's got an AMD Threadripper processor. It's got a GTX 1080. It's got a fanless power supply. So, you know, we're not generating any more kinetic energy than we absolutely have to. And the whole thing has been tuned to match the power consumption of this guy right here. One of the key aspects of the design of the system was using EK's Phoenix MLC water cooling kit, so it's a modular liquid cooler that allows us to quickly connect or disconnect any components we want. So we can either use an internal radiator for testing purposes or unplug the whole thing here to connect it to our external cooler. This is Bertha. She's a little rough around the edges, but with this plan, we think we can use an old radiant heater, which would traditionally be hooked up to a gas firing something, to cool our PC and heat our room. So first order of business, whenever you find a radiator behind like a Jamaican guy's house is cleaning. Now cleaning something like this is not as straightforward as, you know, throwing some water in it, shaking it around, <laughs> and calling it a day. We filled the radiator up with water and vinegar, let it sit for 24 hours, and drained it. The contents were... Oh, 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 the worst. After the initial flush, we filled the radiator up with tap water and let it run upside down for a while, messing up Ivan's LTT Adidas in the process. Oh no, my shoes. Uh-oh. After half an hour of running water at tap pressure through it, it started to look clean. Now in order to mate the radiator's original piping to our water cooling hoses, we needed to thread the stock pipe. Unfortunately, the die bit so hard on reverse that the tube disconnected from the adjacent elbow. And when we tried to vise the tube without the elbow, it ovalized. Luckily, we had compatible sections from another project sitting around, so we Teflon taped the threads, and here's the result. After rigging the radiator up with an industrial pump and a reservoir, we were ready to fill it up. Ivan was so upset that I got his Adidas wet that you can clearly see him trying to electrocute me here completely okay, on purpose. Okay, we have to turn off the water, Ivan. There's so much water, we're gonna kill the pump. Oh! Ah! The good news <laughs> is that he failed. Better luck next time, chump. The bad news is that with the liquid pumping at an industrial pump pressure- Oh, it's so dirty. Not only did it become brownish again, but we also detected a minor leak. It is a pretty substantial leak. That, like, that will affect, no, that won't work. You need Teflon tape. Just tightening it more will not work. After going Gordon Freeman on the joint with a crowbar, we were able to disconnect it and Teflon tape it, adding a T-line drain in the process. You know, just in case. Good thing too. It ended up taking four fills and flushes before the water stayed clear. 
Now, as those of you who watched our full room water cooling project know, mixing metals in a loop essentially creates a battery causing corrosion. This can be mitigated by adding sacrificial anodes to the loop, but due to our testing being very short term, we omitted this step. While we were doing all that, we had our space heater running inside the room that we call the sanity closet. So in here, and we didn't want anybody opening this door because that would let the stank out, so to speak. So in here, this is a five cubic meter room, approximately, accounting for the, the boxes kind of taking up some of it. We've got a wirelessly monitorable temperature sensor here, and then we had our 350 watt heater running here. So the sanity closet started at 23.7 degrees Celsius, which is our office temperature, and then what we've done is we have configured our test to stop at 36.7 degrees, which is the temperature of the human body. You wouldn't really want your room any warmer than that, or it would start to feel like a sauna. So if our PC heats up this room from the same temperature to the same temperature in the same amount of time, then we consider our experiment a success. One last thing, we needed some kind of opening at the back of the case to pipe the quick disconnect through. Finally, we just needed to drag our beast into the closet, hook her up to the radiator via the quick disconnects. So all we've got to do is hook these babies up to these babies. and uh, let it bake for a bit. Finally time to check on this and see how we did with our PC. So this is interesting. Our FPS are, is lower and even though it's water cooled, our GPU is over, it's over 85 degrees. Oh. Our power consumption is only about 275, 280 watts. Our graphics card is thermal throttling. Okay. Let's have a look at what's going on in here. Whoa, wow. That is a heat wave. And I think it's pretty clear what happened. It looks like, ooh, that's hot. <laughs> Oh, I think once our system heated up, it made it easier for it to gather gunk that was still stuck on the inside of the radiator. Oh, that's a real shame. All right, come on over here, Dennis, come have a look. Oh. So. Here's our GPU, yeah, okay. Our GPU is totally gummed up. What a shame. So that affects the amount of heat that we were kicking out into the room. Actually, we found a silver lining here. So we didn't factor in that this high powered pump consumes a lot of power it turns out that it's actually about 75 watts. So our numbers should still be okay. Okay, so after importing all the data, it wasn't immediately obvious uh, how it all came together and made sense because upon initial inspection, they actually look like really different results between the space heater and the PC, but what we didn't factor in initially looking at it is the immense thermal mass of the water inside the radiator. So what's actually happening here is that water is taking a long time to begin to heat up enough that the radiator itself is able to start dissipating heat to the surrounding air. So in effect, all we need to do is time shift our graph a little bit and what you can see is that even though the PC, it lags about two degrees behind the space heater, they both heat the room at the same rate. So, conclusion time. Can you use your PC as a heater for your room? The answer is yes, but we don't recommend the way we did it. Because if you do it the way we did it, you're gonna lag behind. 
by two degrees. And all gamers know that any amount of lag is unacceptable. Which obviously is totally not the problem. Like this, this, this gunk in the, in the water, that's, that's the problem. Speaking of problems, if you don't already have a VPN, that's a problem. Go check out Private Internet Access. They support a variety of VPN protocols and types of encryption and authentication, which allows you to dial in the exact level of privacy protection that you need. They've got apps for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, Linux, and Google Chrome, with support for other platforms coming soon. You can connect up to five devices at the same time, and their apps include DNS leak protection and IPv6 leak protection, with an internet kill switch that will block all traffic if the VPN becomes Comes disconnected unexpectedly. So check it out today at the link in the video description. And if you've already got PIA, hey, they've got gift cards. So we'll have that linked below as well. So thanks for watching, guys. If you just like this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, you can hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured uh, at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join. Sometimes we just do stuff, you know? It's like, yep, we did a thing, but why?